uh, the Peterson project was sitting on a hill, a um, small mountain, overlooking a, a broad plain. The broad plain was, uh, was an irrigation area, and the people down there were getting increasingly concerned that what we were doing was going to affect them. So they, actually, so they, they organized and they marched, and uh, they shut us down. The next thing was, uh, you know, to talk about all of these things and, and attempt um, another meeting. Uh, another meeting was arranged uh, at site. Uh, things got out of hand. Um, one person died. Um, and that was kind of it for about 18 months. Uh, I was involved in, I had much more of the linguistic capability than most anybody else on, in the company at that time, at that particular time anyway. I was also a vice president. So I got involved in uh, looking at what, what had gone wrong and you know, getting us back on the property, although most of that work was actually in the hands of a, a Bolivian counterpart down there. But my analysis of the situation, uh, to me, was absolutely abundantly clear. We provoked that conflict. And I started to really think hard about the way, we would, uh, the, way uh, the business was doing business. Uh, I said, there's got to be a better way. There's, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're talking about now at a time when this whole um, indigenous movement, um, this whole uh, notion of a seriously significant role for civil society and um, and local communities in development was was kind of surging. This is right at the beginning of the nineties. This is ninety three, actually, when when all of this what happened. And we're in Bolivia, where there's a you know a history of uh, colonial alienation in the in the local population and and a cultural tradition of negotiation through confrontation, which the company didn't understand. So that got me thinking about things. Um, a year later, I met Susan, and she's a rural sociologist by training. She was in Bolivia. You'll talk to her about all of, uh, about all of this, but she had started, uh, she was down there uh, trying to get a PhD done. Uh, she was down there as a you know, young single mother, um, needed money, and uh, started, uh, and, and the, the mining companies were starting to twig to the need for some sort of social analysis. So she was, she was doing that, and she and I teamed up. I hired her to, to do some work. Um, at, well, it was, it was more, more her, uh, her Bolivian sidekick, Elizabeth, who did the work at Chaya Pada, but Sir, Susan certainly did some very useful work down there at Don Mario in the Low Country. And we started to, to talk about this stuff and we started to collaborate. Um, and I could, at that point, I could really see, wow, you know, there is a whole other way of doing these things. So in, I think it must have been, yes it was, it was a few years later, we, we collaborated on, on various things, we done a lot of talking about, about stuff. And in 1997, at, at the strong suggestion of some some uh, mutual acquaintances, friends, colleagues down there in Bolivia, uh, the two of us turned up at a World Bank meeting in Quito, Ecuador. It was one of the first um, of these um, sessions, you know, think, uh, think tank type sessions, and it was titled Minds and Communities. I wasn't at all comfortable with, with what was being said there, and Susan shared my thoughts, so uh, put together a position statement there, saying it's all very well to talk about mines and communities, but by the time there's a mine, there could be anything from five to fifty years of history of exploration and interaction. And in fact, most of the concerns, positive and negative, um, about mining are developed during that exploration phase. So what happens in exploration preconditions a lot of what's going to happen at the mine stage. And that was accepted. Um, it was a bit of a revelation to a whole lot of people. Uh, so it was written up in a paper. 
which was published, widely um, circulated, and it just brought this incredible response from a whole lot of people. It was like just taking the genie out of the bottle. Was it a good response? Or oh, yeah. Were, were there a oh, yeah. Well, yeah. actually, it was a divided response. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of very positive response, which was um, um, very well taken on my part. Um, but there was, there was also a, a negative... Uh, there were a lot of people that didn't want to hear this. Mm -hmm. And there was a certain amount of, oh, Captain NGO, and why don't you crawl back under your rock? You know, we don't really want to have to do this sort of thing. Um, but but uh, that was the same year that uh, Jim Cooney coined the phrase social license to operate. 